Section 8.2, Area of a Surface of Revolution. In the case where f is positive and has a continuous derivative, we define the surface area of the surface obtained by rotating the curve y equals f of x, where x is between a and b, about the x-axis as the limit of the Riemann sum 2 pi f of x i star times the square root of 1 plus the derivative of f squared delta x, which is the integral of 2 pi f of x times the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared. This is pretty much uh, the same as our arc length formula, where we go and we look at two consecutive points, and then we find the distance between them, and instead we have to also look at an entire band around the function, uh, bound around the surface. And then we stack up all of those bands and we end up with a surface area. This should be very reminiscent of what we did with the shell method, where we have to find the surface area of um, like a cylinder, basically, but without the bottom of the cylinder and the top of the cylinder or the top and bottom of the cylinder. So remember the formula for the surface area of a cylinder is uh, 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared where the 2 pi r h part is this part, and the uh, 2 pi r squared part is the bottom circle and the top circle, the base and the uh, lid. But because it's empty on the bottom and the top, and of course it's also empty all the way inside, we only consider the outer part, the 2 pi r h part. So the 2 pi um, r, well notice that the radius is the y value, so that's 2 pi f of x. And then uh, how far we go out, the height of this little band for this little cylinder-like thing is the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared. So the very important thing to remember here is that unlike solids of evolution, there is nothing inside of uh, any of these um, surfaces. They are completely hollow on the inside. We're only looking at the area on the outside of the surface. So we just take some curve, we spin it around and around and around, and we only consider the points at which you know we touch when we spin. We don't consider anything on the inside. So let's do an example of this. The curve y equals the square root of 4 minus x squared, where x is between minus 1 and 1, is an arc of the circle x squared plus y squared equals 4. You could just take x squared plus y squared equals 4 and solve for y. You get plus or minus, but we're only considering the top part. So that's this green part right over here. So we take that top part, and then we want to find the area of the surface obtained by rotating this arc about the x-axis. So it goes around and around and around around the x-axis, the entire thing, and it spins and it gives us this um, surface. So it's the surface is actually, if you took a sphere of radius 2 and you chopped off the uh, sides of it, because we're only going between minus 1 and 1 as we spin around, and the circle has a radius of 2, so we don't get the whole circle. So if we want the surface area, we need to get 1 plus the derivative squared and take the square root. So let's get the derivative dy dx is going to be equal to half of 4 minus x squared to the minus 1 half times the derivative of the inside minus 2x by the chain rule. So simplifying that a little bit, we get minus x over the square root of 4 minus x squared. Oh, for some reason I wrote minus 12. This should be minus 1 over 2. There we go. And I want to get the surface area, so that means I have to do an integral. Maybe I'll give myself a little bit of more space just in case. So my surface area is the integral from minus 1 to 1 of 2 pi times our y value times the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared. And in this case, I can pull out the 2 pi, and our y value 
is square root of 4 minus x squared, so we plug that in for y. And then 1 plus the derivative squared is 1 plus this thing squared, so that's 1 plus x squared over 4 minus x squared. And we keep on simplifying. What we can do is find a common denominator over here. So we get 2 pi times the integral times the square root of 4 minus x squared, so we'll keep that for now. And we have the square root of 4 minus x squared plus x squared over 4 minus x squared just by uh, writing this as 4 minus x squared over 4 minus x squared. So our x squareds cancel, which is nice, and we get 2 pi times the integral from minus 1 to 1 of 4 minus x squared times 2 over the square root of 4 minus x squared, because I just moved the square root top and bottom. So that becomes 4 pi times the integral. Oh, well, this is great now because I can just pull out the 2, so then I get 4 pi, and I can, you know, cancel these guys and just get 1. So that's 4 pi times 2. Integral of, a, uh, integral of a constant is just a b minus a times that constant, so that's just 8 pi. So let's find the surface area of the arc of the parabola y equals x squared from 1, 1 to 2, 4 when it's rotated about the y-axis. So we've got y equals x squared. The derivative is equal to 2x. In this case, we have to be uh, a little bit careful, though. We're rotating around the y-axis, not the x-axis. So. In this case, it's going to go around over here, this thing. So instead of going up a certain height y, our radius is a length x. So that means that our integral becomes uh, s equals, well, s for surface area, capital S, equals uh, the integral from 1 to 2 of 2 pi times x instead of 2 pi times y. And we keep our square root of 1 plus the derivative squared. So that becomes 2 pi times the integral from 1 to 2 of x times the square root of 1 plus 4x squared. So because we have an x nearby, it looks like this is a nice candidate for u substitution. So we'll let u equal 1 plus 4x squared. That means that du is equal to 8x dx. And that means that when x is 1, I have u equal to 5 because 1 plus 4 times 1 squared. And when x is 2, that means that I get 16 plus 1 is 17 for you. So our surface area becomes the integral from uh, 5 to 17 now of the square root of u times 1 eighth du, as you just solve for dx. So we get pi over 4 times the integral from 5 to 17 of u to the 1 half du, which is equal to pi over 4 times 2 thirds u to the 3 over 2. We do our antiderivative, and we evaluate from 5 to 17, and we just get pi over 6 times 17 rad 17 minus 5 rad 5. 
This is not the only way you could do this problem, by the way, because we're rotating around the y-axis. We could have expressed everything in terms of uh, y. So that means we could have written an x equals function. We could have said uh, x is equal to the square root of y. And then we could have taken dx dy and gotten 1 over 2 rad y. Similar to the way that we can do arc length in terms of x or in terms of y, we can also do surface area in terms of x in terms of y. If we go back to our formula, we get the exact same thing, but this becomes, you know, c and d. We can just replace them with different limits, and we get um, this in terms of y, where this is, let's say, g prime of y, and this becomes dy. So that means that our integral would have gone from the two y values, instead of going from 1 to 2, we would go from 1 to 4. So our integral would become the integral from 1 to 4 of 2 pi x. It's still x because it was, our radius is still going to be x if we're rotating around the y-axis. We would just replace that with square root of y when we're evaluating. So this would get uh, become a square root of y. And our square root would now be 1 plus dx dy squared. And uh, solving this, or evaluating this integral, will give you the exact same value in the end. So you've got options. Let's find the area of the surface generated by rotating the curve y equals e to the x about the x-axis from 0 to 1. So we've got y equals e to the x. We do the same thing every time. We look for the derivative and we'll set up our integral. The great thing about e to the x, we just take the derivative instantly. So we've got our surface area, capital S, is the integral from 0 to 1 of 2 pi, well, about the x-axis, so it's y again. And we multiply by 1 plus the derivative squared. So we get 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the x, because that's what y is. And we get the square root of 1 plus e to the x squared, which is e to the 2x. So that becomes 2 pi times the integral from 1 to e of the square root of 1 plus u squared. All we do is let uh, u equal e to the x, and then when x equals 0, e to the x is e to the 0, so that's 1. When x is 1, that's e to the 1, so that becomes an e. And then we just sub on the inside. The derivative of uh, e to the x is e to the x, so that gets rid of the e to the x. So I'm not even going to write what u equals because it's a pretty natural substitution. However, Notice after you do that substitution, you still have a square root. So now you have to do a trig substitution. I'll write that one because it's you know not entirely as fun. So we've got 1 plus something squared. That should be like an identity in you know, trigonometry. So what's a good identity for 1 plus something squared? Well, that's 1 plus tangent squared. So I should let u equal tangent theta. And then du is secant squared. So that means we have to look at our limits again. When u equals 1, then tangent theta is 1. So that's when sine and cosine are equal to each other. So that means that theta is at pi over 4. When u is equal to e, that means that tangent of theta is equal to e. So that means that theta is tan inverse of e which is not so much fun, so I'm just going to let that equal alpha, say, where I just relabel it so that I don't have to put tan inverse e into our limit over here every single time. So I'll just put alpha there instead. So now we get that the surface area is 2 pi times the integral from pi over 4 to alpha of secant cubed theta d theta because the square root of 1 plus tangent squared 
becomes the square root of secant squared, which is just secant. And then du gets replaced with secant squared, so I have secant times secant squared, which is secant to the third. So that becomes 2 pi times, remember we did this integral before in section uh, 7.2, it was example 8. We just keep using it again and again, so it's half of secant times tangent plus the natural log of secant plus tangent. And we evaluate that from pi over 4 to tan inverse of e. So that becomes pi times secant alpha tangent alpha plus the natural log of secant alpha plus tangent alpha minus the square root of 2 minus the natural log of the square root of 2 plus 1. So we're not supposed to have any alphas in our answer. Let's see if we can get rid of them. We know that we let uh, tan inverse of e equal alpha, so that means that the tangent of alpha is e, so we can replace those with just e. And let's see what secant is. Well, secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. So that means it's going to be 1 plus e squared. So that means that secant is the square root of that. So we can say that the surface area S is pi times Instead of e secant alpha times tan alpha, we can replace that with e times the square root of 1 plus e squared. And then add that to the natural log of e plus the square root 1 plus e squared, where we didn't need the absolute value anymore because everything's nice and positive in there. And we subtract off the square root of 2 minus the natural log of square root of 2 plus 1.